my only tier one running back is Najee Harris. Um, he checks literally every single box that you could possibly imagine from a movement perspective. There you go. I had to do it to you. Fresh crack. Um, <laughs> but if you look at him play uh, at 230 pounds, the the thing that kind of sticks out is the fluidity, right? The the grace at his size, 6'2", 230. And, you know, he's running, he's running a wheel route downfield, you know, catching a pass over defender or, you know, he's being used, you know, I guess like on an outside zone run, he's cutting it back, making two guys miss. But the thing like that I love about watching Harris is just, he's just so well-rounded. He's everything you want in your modern day bell cow. He has the broadest receiving skill set that I've charted in this class. Him and Gainwell are kind of one and two in that regard, but he wins at all levels of the field as a receiver. That is really unique. And if you watched him in high school, I remember following him in high school because he was, he was probably the most um, hyped running back prospect of this past decade and watching him in high school. I remember I was watching ESPN, you know how they do those like um, ESPN features features and do like, they do like one-on-ones and stuff like Mm -hmm. for camps. Um, And he was, he lined up at receiver against some of the best DBs in the nation. Absolutely cooked them. Yeah. And this is a guy at 6'2", 230. Right. He was a 200, he was a 218 right. pound high schooler. Have, I was going to say, he might not quite right. have been I mean, there at that still, point when you're still, talking about. But yeah. He's still a 6'1 and a half, 6'2", 218 pound high school yeah. running back. Right. And, you know, it's just the skill set that he has is very rare at his size in particular. And I just don't think there's a real hole in his game. He's just, oh, he's but Angelo, as Angelo, as Angelo, as if this guy was this good, how did he not have all the carries the entire time he was there? The, the analytical community is going to have such a problem with that. You know, what's interesting though. I think the one thing that I haven't heard anyone say, and which is what I think the biggest, one of the biggest reasons he came back is to work with Dr. Matthew Rio. Dr. Matthew Ree is the director of sports science at Alabama. I believe he got his job in March of 2020. He was formerly with Indiana. He is probably the smartest, most intuitive sports science mind in North America. There is a reason that Najee Harris, Jalen Waddell, and Devonta Smith's stock has soared this season. And it's, it partially is because of him. And that is why I think two of those guys, obviously um, Smith and Harris, went back to school. You get a chance to work with someone who actually understands human movement in general. Go ahead. Um, and how to improve speed and power. And those Tells qualities. Me I'm going to need a bathroom break in this thing. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's the important thing about having a guy like that, you know, in your back pocket and, you know, yeah. in your meeting rooms and, and being able to work with him on a day-to-day basis, that was important. And you saw it in his game. And it was funny when I charted um, Harris's junior season, he went from being a mid tier two running back to being a set it and forget it tier one player. Yeah. Like he is a, he, he goes into the, potential all pro realm. Yeah. And that's the difference that I think um, Dr. Matthew Rhea made and Matt Rhea is, I mean, look him up, brilliant guy. And you know, that's a big, big piece of why I, I, I'm so, I feel so strongly about Najee Harris being so safe. Yeah. Well, we'll, well, I think we're going to cap this thing off with at the end of this podcast with talking a little Devonte Smith. So I'll save perfect the conversation about him. We'll bring uh re was it Rhea? Yeah, that Matthew Rhea. We'll bring him back up uh, uh, then. It feels like Alabama. I agree with you. I, I got I got Najee up at up at number one. Um, I it seemed like they could have just literally given it given the ball to Najee Harris every snap of the game in one fashion or another. Probably. Still been one of the best teams in the country. Probably like yeah. he was he was just that good uh, this year and and really last year. He seems like he's plenty fast as well. Like some people knock mm-hmm. the speed a little bit, but he looks plenty fast to me. Like. Oh yeah, I mean he's he's ran High over. Adjusted speed score is going to be strong too, though. <laughs> yeah, two thirty. I mean it's it's funny because he has a faster clocked game speed than that of Miles Sanders. 
Yeah. Do with it as you will. Right. Sure, sure. I'm not, saying he's than Miles. I'm not saying he's faster than Miles Sanders, but he is plenty fast. Yeah. And it shows. I mean, he you know, was, it, was a great offensive line this year at Bama. Um, and did, obviously you, did you see what's cast. his name? Brown waiting like at 364. <laughs> Just a mountain. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Those he's six three, so he's not even like yeah, a six not, six not six like, seven yeah, dude. A giant. Yeah. Like holy, that, that's a wide human being. That is yeah. a that is a literal refrigerator. It's yeah. unbelievable. Well, it's funny that you like you, you hit like some. Did you, did you call it elegance in his game? Is that what you went with? Is that fluidity? I think I said fluidity. Fluidity, and I think there was like another grace. Grace, there it is. I got him as a big, rugged dude, just this big manly it. man, like a like a black Paul Bunyan, if you will. I love it. Um, no, I, I love but it. But if if Paul Bunyan was teaching a class on what fucking <laughs> silverware to use at a fancy dinner, that is hilarious. That type of elegance in his game to go along with that big rugged seems like he could wear flannel everywhere. That's, that's uh, a great, that's a great description. I was talking to my buddy a couple nights ago when we were talking about the prospects in this class naturally. And he's like, what do you think of Najee here? It's like, how would you describe him? I'm like, all right, he is a bull wearing ballerina slippers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is him. He's, he's Paul Bunyan and babe in the blue ox. All mixed together. <laughs> all mixed together. Fun to watch, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a, just a, like you said, most big men like that, they seem so stiff. And I think Najee is the absolute different. Mm-hmm. Like he seems oh, yeah. so pliable, like just yeah, very bendable human. And the stiff arm is nasty. Larry Holmes-esque, if you will. Not sure. sure. A former heavyweight champion beat Ali. But Ali was past his prime. He's from where I'm from. So I just I, I love it. When I'm throwing love the reference, references, good. I'm throwing, I'm throwing Larry in there. I'll, shout out to Larry Holmes, the Easton assassin. But yeah, man, I mean, the, I guess the, the other biggest knock on, on Najee is why, you know, one, why couldn't, why, why did he not beat out all, keep other guys off the field? And I think this Alabama has a ridiculous amount of talent. That's a stupid argument. And Simmons two, is old Two, Yeah. He'll be 23 in March. So that's the, that's the other not. And I was like, I don't, I don't even fucking care. Like <laughs> he runs I'm, like he's 23. Like, that's for yeah, sure. Everybody hates running backs and they're old and you want to sell them by their second contract anyway. So well, why do I even care? This guy's awesome. I don't agree with that necessarily. I'm just saying like, that's what people, where people are at anyway. And it's like, he's got, he's awesome. He's like you said, he's that old Bronco, uh, said, I don't know if you guys remember that, uh, it was like an old infomercial that used to be on at like three in the morning. Oh, I love those. Night. Those, those was are like the best. Every, you could cook best. everything in this thing. And the, the pitch was he would just hit the audience. He'd be like, and you said it and forget <laughs> it. And everybody would go nuts. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I'm all, I think I, I can't really find too many bad things to say about the guy, no. except for the, the people who hate on the age. Thoughts on the age? I, I mean, it's at a position though where it's, you're getting how many elite years for, and then it's anything after that's a bonus. Like if this is like a 23 year old wide receiver, we're talking about who you want to get eight to 10 years of legitimate production. I think then it's like, okay, like that, that's where it's a little different. Um, but even so, I mean, I'm just, I look at the player, you know, yeah. I'm not going to be an ages. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is and you can't change his age. Right. Like you can't, you know, you can't <laughs> underdevelop, like you can't yeah. do that. Um, but I'm not too, I'm not worried about the age at all. Jay Wayne, do you have a problem with this? I have this, no problems. This, this Najee over ETN. No, Jay, Jay, I, I Jason went to Clemson. He's our Clemson guy. He does a okay job of staying remember, fairly man. neutral, but I try to stay nooch, uh, but it's tough. And if I'm on the clock at one, one, I mean, I'd like to say I could just move back to one, two, but then who knows who's going to take. I got to get a guarantee that you're taking Najee Harris with that one, one, if I move back and I probably will just take ETN because there's no way I could pass on him. But I try to I try to stay unbiased when I am on this show and I'm telling people what I think. If I was you, I would probably have to take Najee Harris, and I'm totally fine with that. And and we have teams that we share together and stuff, and I'm probably going to get outvoted. Uh, we do have one draft where we uh, we traded somebody and, and they got the one once so we have their pick and we're going to have to decide whether we want ETN and Harris. I'm probably going to lose that vote and I'm not going to be upset at all about having Harris on the team. He's pro- he's he's a safer prospect, I guess, than ETN in, in, in some ways. Um, 
But I mean, I agree with everything you guys said about Najee. He's incredible to be so big and powerful and fluid at the same time with the speed and the change of direction. And then you throw on top of that, the fact that he can go high point, a back shoulder fade and contort his body at the same time. Like, it's just incredible what that man can do on a football field. Don't care at all about the age. Don't care about the lack of production prior to the last year. Good for him for coming back getting that massive workload, showing everybody, and then drastically improving his draft stock, I would imagine. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. Especially with how deep last year's class was. So I have no problems with any of this. Um, uh, Najee Harris, how can you argue with that, man? Word. All right, let's springboard right into I think that's your end of Tier 1, Angelo. Yeah, that's it. Najee Harris is the only only back I, I have in Tier 1 personally okay. this year. 